you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Aren't you glad, online audience, you got to experience that powerful anointing? God is up to something spectacular today, man. Oh, that was just so fantastic. Praise God for what He is doing in the house today and wherever you are in your house my goodness we serve a great big god if you just really enjoyed that and enjoyed seeing that comeback can we just give god a little bit of praise hey my goodness gracious i i feel like there's just a little bit of propheticness in the title today see i want to talk to you about experiencing your comeback somebody say comeback hey there it is somebody say it's my time for him to help me with my comeback. Amen. I want to talk to you about that today. Our text involves a time when David experienced a tremendous setback, an entire area where his family was had been ravaged by war, burned to the ground, the wives and children taken away. And as if that wasn't bad enough, it gets worse. Because the 600 troops that are with him start complaining against him like it's his fault. And they talk of stoning him. You see, everybody wants to be the big cheese, but you don't understand that there's sometimes a big rat chasing the big cheese. And you don't always want the Tylenol and Tums that comes with leadership. And so he's in a moment in time where he's grieving like everybody else. My goodness, we've just been, this, this area we've been living in, Ziklag, has been ravaged. Our wives and children are gone, and now you guys want to kill me. And you thought you had a bad week last week. How many are just glad to hit the reset and it's a new week? Did you know Sunday's the first day of a new week? Come on, somebody. Just high-five your neighbor and say, thank you, it's a new week. I'm hitting reset on the triple odometer of life. Amen. So he, he's in this situation, they're talking about killing him, and D, David needed strength. If ever someone needed strength, he needed strength for a supernatural comeback. And if you need strength, if you desire a comeback, if you want to recover things that have been lost, come on somebody, I want you to know you're at the right place at the right time, because God has a word for us today. If we'll receive it, if we'll apply it, I believe God wants to do something spectacular in our lives. Our text is going to be found in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 and verse 6, and then we're just going to go right to the word, we're going to go right to the word after some prayer. But take a look at this, verse 1, it said this, now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. Let's fast forward to verse 6, shall we? Now David was greatly distressed. In other words, he was stressed out. Come on, somebody. He was feeling the pressure. He was feeling the squeeze. For the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. It's very interesting to find in the scriptures whenever you see a but. Because it's a pivot point in the scriptures. They had been ravaged. They had been burned. The city had been destroyed. The wives and children had been taken away. The followers and people with them are upset. But David, somebody say, but David. He strengthened himself in the Lord. It's a pivot point. Today could be a pivot point for you. I don't know what's in your rearview mirror. I don't know everything that's in your journal of life to this point and this week. And I, I don't know when you parked your car today what you were facing as you walked in or as you tuned in online. I, I don't know exactly. I know some of you, but not all of you. But I know one thing. Today can be a pivot point. Today can be a moment when you can determine to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Today can be the day when your comeback begins with some supernatural strength from God. How many ready to receive that today, man? I'm telling you, it's here for you. Let's pray that way. Heavenly Father, I pray right now for every soul listening that we would find supernatural strength because I believe there's a bounce back anointing that you want to put in our souls. I believe there's something that is spring in our step, God. I believe that there's things you want us to recover, and I believe that there's ground you want us to take. I believe there's things you want us to experience in the future, and I believe 
believe that though we might have been set back, knocked on our butt, blown away, felt like we're in the midst of chaos and disorder, but God, you're a God of order. You, you've scripted the plans for us. You said you've ordered our steps. Jeremiah 29, 1, 11 said, 29, 11 says, you know the plans that you have for us. God, right now, I pray that you would help all of us to have an expectancy that our comeback isn't that far away, that God, you're getting ready to release an anointing within us to experience a comeback anointing to recover all in Jesus' name. And those who are in agreement today, ready to be strengthened by the word of God, said amen. amen. All right, praise God. Our goal today is real simple. I want to learn from David. You can learn from history or repeat it. And I want to learn from history and I want to repeat some of his history because he, he could teach us some great things. And I want to learn specifically how to experience a comeback. You see, it's not, it's not how many times in life you get knocked down, but it's how many times you get back up again. Amen. And so we need to have that bounce back anointing. We need to come back. And so the, 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 as, I, as I read this text, as I look through this story, there's so many different things I could talk about. I'm going to have to be disciplined and just talk about a few things. But the first thing I want to do is this. I want you, and you could take a look at the MCOG app, download that, fill in the blank, share it with yourself later, or write down notes, or whatever you got to do, take a picture of the screen, whatever works for you, but get this in your spirit. The first thing you need to do, as we observe from David, is you need to pause and find strength in God. Verse 6 in our text said that he strengthened himself in the Lord. How did he strengthen himself in the Lord? The text doesn't go into great detail, but if you listen to Jewish rabbi teachings and different things and different theologians, a lot of people believe that one of the Psalms, I can't remember the exact chapter right now, but one of the Psalms was actually probably written during this time when David needed to strengthen himself in the Lord. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that the enemy and the adversary... When life happens, whether he made it happen or didn't make it happen, he will try to capitalize on that moment and try to get you to be isolated, insulated, and, and for sure put you in such a place that you're so distressed that the last thing that you would think about doing is using your gifts and talents for God or for others. And we can all say we've been there and done that. I ain't serving today. I ain't. I'm, 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 okay. Okay. You're, so you're letting Satan put you in the penalty box, which was meant for him, not for you. So David instead said, I'm going to use my gifts and my talents, wrote a psalm. I'll, I'll, this week I'll try and find it and put it on Facebook for you. Is that, is that cool? I'll try to put that, I'll give you the rest of the story. Instagram, whatever else we got. But he used his gifts and talents. We know he's a musician, the same one who played the harp and helps king Saul to calm himself down don't you think that did something for David you see we've all got different ways that we strengthen ourselves in the Lord but I can tell you one thing when we use our gifts and time and talents to serve others with the gifts of God it does something supernatural to strengthen us I remember during normal times when I could go to the hospital without having to go through you know I don't know whatever I can remember days going, oh, man, I need to go visit so-and-so. And, -so. and, I, and I, I can remember very early in the ministry in the 90s going, I don't want to go see that person. I'm having a miserable day. I feel horrible. And I said, no, pick yourself up. And I learned very quickly that just using that gift of kindness and that pastoral ministry, just go in there and minister to that person. I went out of that hospital. I think they, I, they thought I ministered to them. They ministered to me. And all of a sudden, using that gift, that gift, time and talents and treasures for God to serve others, all of a sudden it did something that strengthened me on the inside. Have you ever noticed that? So I just want to tell you, that's one thing. I believe he did that to strengthen himself. But let me get into the text to show you some other specific things that I know that he did. Because I love how David dealt with this situation. He went and strengthened himself in the Lord. Okay. He paused. He said, I want to find strength in God. I've, I've got all these things going on around me. I've got all this chaos. I see the news. I hear the reports. I hear your grumbling. I'm going to hit the pause button and just, and just find strength in the Lord. And he, and he did this because he went to a priest named Abathar. Now, there's different ways to enunciate. That's how I'm going to say it. It's my sermon. That's how I'm saying it today. Okay. <laughs> Somebody could put a V in there, have a har and all this. I'm not just whatever. All right. But look with me at verse 7, the first part. Then David said to Abathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, he, he talked to him. He went to find this priest. Now, can I tell you that there wasn't a lot of priests to find? He was the priest to find. But it's significant because back then, names had a meaning, unlike some of the names that Jennifer tells me that kids have in school today. I don't know what they mean. 
But this name meant something. And you know what it meant? It meant my father is great. So here David is, just mind blown, in a mind blowing situation, stressed out, in distress. He pauses, seeks strength in the one whose name is my father is great. Can I tell you, we have a father in heaven who is great and greatly to be praised. How great is our God? Our God is so great. His love is so great that he sent Jesus to die for us, didn't he? He sent Jesus to live for us. He sent Jesus to be our way maker. We got a song called, everybody loves it, way maker. You know, he, he loves us that much. He loves us. His love is so great that he's given us the person of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and now the Holy Spirit in the earth today. It's absolutely incredible. His love, the Father's love is so great for us that he said he'd never leave us. He'd never forsake us. In the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy 31 and 6, he said, be strong and be of courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. You put whatever them, just replace that with whatever you're going through. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. That's the God that we serve. Our Father is great. David began to strengthen himself in the Lord when he went to the one whose name meant, My Father is great. And that's what I'm hoping you will do today. If you want to experience your comeback... I want to encourage you to take a few minutes online, comment, whatever, text, email us in person. I want to encourage you at the right moment in time when I give you the invitation, I'll, I want to encourage you to come right here or right here or right here, maybe right over here. And I want you to just raise your hand and go, pause, seek the Lord in prayer, seek the one who is truly great. There was no one greater than our father. David went to a priest whose name means my father is great. My name is Pastor Andy Stevens and my father is great. His name is Jehovah Jireh. He's got so many names, but the great thing is he knows your name. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through and he cares about you. Allow yourself to spend just a few moments of letting some other people of like faith pray for you to be strengthened in the presence of the Lord. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Stop for a minute allowing all of the external inputs saturating you with all kinds of thoughts that are overwhelming and in strength. Instead, strengthen yourself from the inside out and you will feel an amazing experience in your life. I just want to encourage you. I propose to you that your comeback might just be one prayer away. I want you to contemplate that just one prayer away. So in the end of this message, when I say, please stand and those want to come forward, I want you to ask yourself, are you going to allow yourself to be robbed of your comeback because you're too whatever emotion to come forward? Come, let's pray together. Amen. I want to see some breakthroughs. When we asked this week, describe how we can pray for you in one word. Within 60 minutes, we got flooded with oh, at 48, I think it was 51 afterwards after we published it, over 50 different one word prayer requests from a whole bunch of people. Bang, just like that. I'm telling you, your comeback could be one prayer away. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Amen. Are you with me, church? Are you ready for another idea from David? This is real good stuff. How to experience your comeback? This is awesome. You're, this is going to liberate some of you. Change who you're talking to. Just going to let that sink in for a second. Change who you're talking to. If you look in our text, look at verse 6. David was allowing the crowd who was with him that wasn't with him talk to him. But then in verse 7, David changed who he was talking to with great intention. We read the first verse, the, the first part of verse 7. Then David said to Abathar the priest, Amalek's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. You, you, you see, I, I love this. I love this. He, he found the priest and he asked for his ephod. You're like, what, 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 what is an ephod? 
we don't hear a lot about it. It's a priestly garment made of two pieces of fabric, one that would go in the front and one that would go in the back. And then it was joined together with two stones. And those two stones had names inscribed upon them. I'll talk about them in a second. And it was a priestly garment. And uh, you would attach to that the breastplate that would have the stones that would represent the 12 tribes of Israel. It was a priestly garment. And it had a priestly responsibility. So what I want you to notice is David, the warrior king, pauses, is strengthened in the Lord, changes who he's talking to, and for a moment changes from warrior wardrobe to priestly wardrobe. What's our parallel? You've been trying all week long all month long, all year long, all however long, in carnal ways, in ways of man, in ways of worldly wisdom, in the world of worldly knowledge. Prayer positions you to experience something supernatural. We are all to be, the, the Bible says we're a peculiar people. Also describes us as a royal priesthood. Royal, did you catch that? Some song out there, never going to be a royal. Oh, yes, you are in Jesus Christ. And so this is, a, this is a spiritual garment. And sometimes we need to put down carnal things and we need to have a spiritual moment in time. Some of you, I'm telling you, your comeback is going to come when you start getting spiritual and scriptural about what you're dealing with because you've been trying to figure it out all on your own. And that's because maybe you've got a great work ethic. And I love a great work ethic as much as anybody else. And I, I love the idea of, well, I made this mess. I'll fix this mess. That's taking responsibility. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I think that's great. But there are times in life when you can't fix it, but God can. Amen? And, and so we, we've got to go to him in those times. Now, the, like I said, the front of this garment and the back of this garment are joined together with 12 stones, or two stones rather, with 12 tribes of Israel engraved upon them. Now, why was that? Because in times of prayer, the priest would go before God carrying the people on his shoulders into the presence of the Lord, interceding for the people. And now I think we have a high priest named Jesus Christ who carries all of us and all of our prayers to the Father who knows our names. When we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, those prayers are brought to the Father who is great by our high priest. And all we have to do is pray and believe in the name of Jesus Christ and tell him what's on our heart and mind. It was also used when the priest and the people of God would need to understand what is the will of the Lord. God, what do you want us to do in this situation? And David sought his direction. He said, what do you want us to do in this? You know, we're, we've just been ravaged and everything else. And what, what do you want us to do? I'm so glad that David did this and he gives us this example. I think we just need to, for some of us, we just need to find our place of prayer. Some of you moms that have got a whole bunch of ankle biters, you know what it is. The only time of peace and quiet you get is when they're sleeping, right? And when he's not home. Come on, somebody. Just saying, you know, sometimes you just need that alone time. Find it. And when you, or, or guys, whatever, you know, when you find that, find your niche in your moment. I don't care if you have to go to a Wawa parking lot to the far end. But find your moment and find a place where you can talk with God and pray and, and just pour it out before God. I, I love this too. David's prayer is something that's noteworthy. David's prayer was short and simple and God's answer was short and simple. Isn't that great? I think I shared it last week or the week before. You don't have to pray really long prayers. You can if you want to. You can talk to God as long as you want. How many have the gift of gab besides me? Yeah, God can handle it. If you want to talk to him for two hours and never give him a word in edgewise, he can take it. At some point, he might like to say, are you done? Can I talk for a minute? You know, because prayer should be this dialogue experience. But take your time and just share with God and unload with him. But in this case, the prayer was short, right to the point, And the answer was short, right to the point. And when David emerged 
from his time of strengthening in prayer with God, he was a man with a plan, right? He prayed real quick, God, what do you want us to do? Shall we go? Yeah, you'll go. You go. It's going to be, it's going to work out. He came out of his time and he emerged strengthened as a man with a plan. And also, I want you to notice, he was not intimidated by what David called the troublemakers. Do you know who the troublemakers were? The people that were with him. The people that wanted to stone him. I know what that's like. I do. I know what it's like in leadership to tell people, you know what you need to do? Support your local pastor and shut up. I haven't said that in a long time, but I've said that before. And sometimes that's what you need to do at work. Support your local supervisor and shut up. Support your owner. and Be quiet. Amen? I'm making friends now, aren't I? (laughs) Management more than labor, but I'm just telling you, there's times. And and, and so he emerged. And and, and listen, I think of the troublemakers in our life. I want to go there for a minute because sometimes we give them such a voice. Why are you giving people cheap seats in your life a loud voice in your life? You understand what I'm saying? Don't let people with cheap seats have the loudest voice in your life. What am I saying? People who make no investment in your life. They just do drive-by shootings. They just drive by and... Who do you think you are? Right? He emerged from this not forgetful of that, not unmindful that they wanted to stone him. He emerged from that going, I've heard from you, but I've heard from him. And I know our comeback is coming. Are you with me, church? He changed who he was talking to. And some of you need to do that very same thing. Some of you need to press the pause button on some people. Let it go to voicemail. It'll be all right. Did you know you don't have to reply to all text messages instantly, even though it's an instant messaging system? Just ask any teenager. They will teach you how to do that. Teenagers have the gift of getting a message and not replying for hours. Right? And some parents need help with that. I know I'm one of them sometimes. Any parents can relate to what I'm talking about? Students, can you relate? You could teach some of us how you don't always have to reply instantly. The bottom line is the key to your comeback might simply be a matter of spending a few minutes and time up here in prayer today and just change who you're talking to for a minute. Amen? All right, you ready for one more thing? And this, this will help you. So we're going to pause and get strengthened by God. We're going to change who we're talking to if we look at David. And then the third thing we can do is this. Prayer will position you with the right people. Because the wrong people will take you to the wrong place. How many of you have been there? The Bible says somewhere that bad, bad friends corrupt good morals. The wrong people take you to the wrong place. But the right people, oh my goodness. So what I want you to see is David moved forward with courage into his comeback. But he did so with a 30% force reduction. I'm looking at some people who have served in the military. A 30% force reduction against a large amount of troops doesn't make a lot of military sense. I got one shaking his head going, no, that doesn't make any sense. That's totally uncomforting. But that's exactly what happened. Let me read the text to you in verse 9 and 10. After David has this talk with God, God says, yeah, it's going to be all right. Let's go. So David went and he had 600 men who were with him. And he came to the brook Besser, where those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind who were so weary that they could not cross the brook. Did you capture that? He's got 600 people with him. He's, everybody's mind is shattered. He's completely stressed out as a leader. He says, I'm going to press pause and get strengthened in God, write a song and worship God, and and I'm going to pray to God, change who I'm talking to. I've emerged, I've got a plan, I've heard from God, let's go. And then imagine one-third of your friends and family says, no, I'm not going with you. Immediately, that evokes all kinds of thoughts in our minds. And if you've been a Christian a long time, you start to say, yeah, well, a third of heaven went to hell and left with Satan. And, you know, you you make parallels, can't we, right? Don't do that. Resist the urge, because I want to teach you really quickly quickly some lessons between the lines here, because I believe that prayer will, in fact, position you with the right people. So the first lesson is this. Don't be upset when some folks don't want to be a part of your comeback. Is that okay? Just just don't be upset with that. It, It doesn't mean that they don't care about you. Maybe they're just not up for the battle. 
those people had been on a really long foot journey. Study it out. Miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And some uh, arthritis, do you think that's new? Come on now. Some of us get weary on a road trip. We've been driving so long on my legs. Imagine walking all day on them legs. And now we're going to go into battle? Yeah, 200 just said, I'm not going there. You know what? Some people have been with you for so long, and they love you. And they have been with you on the journey. And they haven't stopped loving you, but they're just not up for the fifth quarter. It doesn't mean they don't love you. It doesn't mean that they don't care about you. But sometimes all the people that got you to where you are aren't going to be the people to bring you to where you're going. And we don't need to diss them for that or anything else. We just need to say thank you. There's a season for everything. And David remembered those people, and he blessed those people just like the other people. And people had a little talk about that, and he's like, no, 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 no. And he blessed them. So bless those and and, and say thank God because there's a reason for it. Amen? And so we, we do that. But then what you need to do is, because the temptation here is to become insecure. If one-third of those who are with you all of a sudden weren't with you, right, that, w- that could bring some feelings of insecurity. But instead, what we need to do is we need to be secure knowing that the two-thirds, the 400 people, had David's back. They were ready th- through thick and thin. They were like special ops, man. They're like, yeah, we're all in for this. Let's go. And they had his back. Thank God. And be secure about those who have your back that will go with you into the battle. You'll know who those people are. And they will battle with you for seasons. And another season, they might be a part of the 200. And that's okay. Because God orders our steps. And he orders who we are with and when we are with those people. If we will trust God, God will align us with the right people in life. Amen? Are you with me? So that help, I hope that helps somebody. But let me also go a little bit further. David also received some help from people that, from someone that he could never have planned on. And I find this so intriguing. David and his men came across an Egyptian that had been left maybe to die. Look with me in verse 13. Then David said to him, they found this guy, to whom do you belong and where are you from? And he said, I'm a young man from Egypt serving uh, a servant of the Amalekite. And my master left me behind. Because three days ago, I fell sick. We made an invasion of the southern area of the Cherethites in the territory which belongs to Judah and of the southern area of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. So here's a guy that was responsible for all the stress. Been left sick three days ago. That was a bad situation for that dude. It would be really tempting and really easy to go, you were part of them? Doink. Right? Done, next. But instead, David didn't do that. He, 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 he found this, that this unplanned connection turned out to be the key to his comeback. Do you understand that? Because if you read the text further, David talks to him and men talk to him and say, okay, um, so where are they now? It's time for our comeback. It's time for us to recover our family and our wives and all kinds of stuff that was lost. Where are they now? And the dude's like, hey, if you don't hand me back over to them, I'll tell you. And so because David was kind to someone he hadn't planned on meeting and had no idea that this person would be involved in his life and treated the person right, this person ended up being the key to their comeback because there's a lot of land to cover. Who knows where these people are? But this person was left in an act of cruelty, in my opinion, because to be left sick in that kind of situation, not a good situation at all. David comes along, David goes, just, you're dead, next, you know, vengeance is mine right now. And, uh, you know, but instead he says, no, no, no. We're, and the guy says, I'll tell you. And it led to an incredible recovery, incredible comeback where everything that was lost was recovered. Not, not, a, not a person was lost. If you read further, they captured, it was a two or four hundred men. It's just absolutely incredible. That, it's just this incredible comeback. And so the, the, the takeaway is this. Thank God for those who are with you in the battle and be kind to those you meet because sometimes the least likely person might end up being the vital key to your comeback. The bottom line is this. David was positioned with the right people because he was a person of prayer. And when you're a person of prayer, it tempers your attitudes and your reactions. 
and it helps you to see things differently. And I think that's what helped David. Because David was a warrior. David killed a lion at night, right? He protected, protected his sheep from bears. He took on Goliath without any fear. David was a man. He was a man's man. I mean, just rugged. Warrior. But in that moment, shows an act of kindness, and it's the key to his comeback. What if a posture of prayer positions you to be kind to someone that you would never suspect could be the key to your comeback? Because you just never know how it's going to work out. Amen? Does that help you? Can we all stand together? Because I'm kind of done preaching this morning. I think we need to practice what I'm preaching to actually get to prayer. If you're ready for a comeback... I want to pray that God will position your life with the right people. Amen? And sometimes the right people means that some people say, I'm not going there. And sometimes the right people means you making some decisions, recognizing that some people are not a good fit for where you are right now. Amen? And so you just say, you create a little distance there. It's a whole other message for another time. There's so many things that I could expound upon here and I was so tempted, but I'm trying not to give in to that temptation because I just think that what we really need to do is we just need to pray. I think prayer works. I think prayer changes things. And I think that prayer can unleash an anointing to set you up for a comeback. And I think so many people are so hungry to see a comeback in their life in their family, in their business, where whatever it is you're going through. And I just want to tell you that I believe your comeback might just be one prayer away. I want to encourage you today to pause, to hit the pause button, to come down to this altar, this place of prayer, and to be strengthened in the Lord your God. And as you pray today, that we will be strengthened as we go to our Father who is great. And maybe in that moment of prayer, you'll make a resolution to say, you know what, I'm going to use my gifts and talents. I'm not going to be a pew potato. I'm not going to be a spectator. I'm going to, I'm going to be a part of what God is doing. I'm going to sign up for a ministry in this church and volunteer once a month. I'm going to do something. I'm going to talk to the staff and find out how can I use my gifts and talents to serve somebody else? How can I use my gifts and talents outside the four walls of this church? How can I use what God's anointed in me? But do that and you'll be strengthening yourself in the Lord. Some of you, I want to pray for you today that you would just change who you're talking to and who you're listening to. And the first way to do that is to come to a place in prayer and say, God, I'm here today to change who I'm talking to, and I'm going to begin with you. Sometimes we go everywhere else, don't we? We go to Google. We go to Snapchat. We go to the research. We go to this person. We go to that person. We go to family. We go to friends. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. But how about sometimes we just hit pause and talk to God and get his read on things? Because God told David, yes, go. I'm going to help you. But there's other times when he might have said, no, hit pause. I'm going to do something. And we need to have the discernment to know when God says go and when God says wait. Amen? Sometimes God says wait. I think of the big snowstorm we just had. I grew up in New England, so I know that I need to wait for the snow plow. Because I know if I go too soon, I'm going to do a bunch of work, and that snow plow is going to come, and he's going to undo all my work at the end of the driveway with some really heavy stuff. So why not just pause and let him go and do all he's going to do or she's going to do. And when they're done, go out there and take care of business and do it once. Amen? So we need to have that time to hear from God, change who you're talking to. And for some of you, your comeback is just one relationship away. It's one new connection away. Or one, someone just taking a break in a relationship. Or changing that relationship dynamic a little bit. Does that make sense? I'm not talking about dissing anybody or disrespecting anybody or dishonoring anybody. I'm not talking about being upset with anybody, but I'm just saying we, we just need to pray, God, would you position the right people in my life? I remember hearing these words, Andy, this is a mess you can't clean up, but I will help you. Thank you, God, for that person you put in my life to clean up what I couldn't. Sometimes we just find ourselves in places. And the great thing is God's always worked through people. And so the reality is your comeback is probably going to involve other people. If it only needed to involve you, why hasn't it happened? 
Maybe because there's some other people that God wants to involve in your journey to share in revealing God's way and God's plan to amplify the glory that God gets from your story that you're going through. Amen. So today, I want if you want to pray that way, pray for God to position the right people, change who you're talking to, find strength in God. I'm telling you, today is your day of the comeback. I, th I just feel it's prophetic, and it's just, it's so on time, and I, I just want to pray for people. So I hope this altar is filled with people. But right now, as they get ready to worship, I just want you to come. If you're online, you can comment, you can send us a message, you can reach out to us any way you know how, and we will personally follow up with you. But right now, I just want to say this place of prayer is open. We can pray for anything because our God can do absolutely anything when we pray and trust him. We just pray according to his word and we trust him for his voice in our life. Amen? So right now, come and be strengthened in Jesus' name. It's time for you to experience your comeback. If you're ready for your comeback, get on down here and let's pray in Jesus' name.